Official dot streetsmarts at gmail dot com. It's like you want to contact us. Listen to us right here exclusively on YouTube, Street Smart Audio. Oh fuck with us. Official dot streetsmarts on SoundCloud, not G. Street Smart fan page on Facebook. Street underscore smarts on Twitter. ECW memories with the goofs. <laughs> oh, they're damn sure goofs. Why? Why wrong answers only seem so silly to me? Courtesy of PWInsider.com. dot com. Neck beard. Neck beard. Yeah, neck now there's someone who puts a smile on my face. I don't know what it is about fat people with beards that just, you know, say just make me happy for some reason. But Santa Claus fake ass and motherfucking neck beard Mike Johnson. All you gotta do is say his name and I'm just happy. This is the weekend the weekend wrestling history as we see fit. April 9th, nineteen fifty three. Oh shit, let me guess. Terry Funk won his third world championship. The original nature boy, but Buddy Rogers, defeats Antonio Rocca in Cleveland, Ohio. Oh, shit. To win the Ohio version of the Boston AWA World Heavyweight title for the third time. Is that right? So, Antonio... Oh, I know... Oh, yeah, I know he's not alive no more. I wonder if they put the belt in the casket with him, though. Oh, no, no. Oh, it's, no, Buddy Rogers won. That's right. Oh, yeah, I wonder what... He, well, he's dead, too. I wonder what he did with that motherfucker. Same day, 2013. WWE broadcasted the 2013 WWE Hall of Fame ceremony special on the USA Network. Inductees were Booker T, Trish Stratus, Mick Foley, Bob Backlund, Bruno San Martino, and current president of the united states donald j trump that has to be just at least on paper i know it wasn't um on broadcast but it has to be probably one of the most stacked classes from top to bottom even with the fucking um um celebrity guests and donald trump and shit april 10th 2000 with much fanfare eric bischoff and vince russo returned to wcw Presumably to take control of the company and help bring it back to prominence. Psych! They make their return on a live edition of Nitro from Denver, Colorado. Terrible fucking show. Oh my god. Mm, a sign of things to come, apparently. A litany of birthdays, same day. 1925. Angelo Poffo was born. Oh shit, the pappy of uh, Randy and the Genius, right? Mm-hmm. Oh, happy birthday. 1954, the one and only Paul Bearer, Percy Pringle, was born. Yes, oh yes. Real name, William Moody. In 1980, Jesse Neal was born. Who? <laughs> TNA superstar, former military veteran from the USS Cole. Oh, oh, thank you for your service. Moving on. <clears throat> April 11th, 1943. One of the all-time greats, NWA world champion, and one of the toughest sons of bitches to ever walk Earth One, Harley Race was born. Oh, whew. oh I thought you was going to say, I thought you was going to say Terry Funk, because first, he is not tough, and second of all, he was born way before 1943. <sighs> Same day, 1981, the scourge of the IWC was born. Yes, sir. Happy, happy birthday again. Even though um, it's not the 11th anymore and shit, but you know, what I'm saying happy birthday one more time, champ. Thank you kindly. You're welcome kindly. Same day, 1982, Bruce Reed and Sweet Brown Sugar. <laughs> defeated oh. Dory Funk Jr. and yeah. David Von Erich to win the Florida NWA North America North American Tag Team Titles in Orlando, Florida. If you're losing to a man who calls himself Sweet Brown Sugar, um, um, you suck ass. But again, we're talking about Dory Funk Jr., so that goes without saying. But uh, you shouldn't be. But <laughs> I think it says a lot about Dory. That he got his ass whooped by someone named Sweet Brown Sugar. On a sad note, same day, 2011, Alex Wybrow, professionally known as Sweet and Sugar, Sweet and Sour, Larry Sweeney, 
was found dead after taking oh. his own life in Lake Charles, Louisiana, where he had been residing as well as training and wrestling independently. The fire, uh, the PWI insider uh, gave him a nice little obit. Moving on. So he just couldn't shake that sweet and sour gimmick, huh? April 12th, 1997. NWA New Jersey's second annual Hot Stuff Eddie Gilbert, Eddie Gilbert Memorial Brawl is held at West High School in New in Cherry Hill, New Jersey. Wait, 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 wait a minute. Wait a minute. You mean to tell me someone actually had the consideration and the intelligence and the the true knowledge and honor of the wrestling business and wrestling history <clears throat> excuse me to have a Eddie Gilbert memorial brawl not just one but two for those who don't know or who may be listening for the first time allow me to have the pleasure of telling you that Eddie Gilbert Eddie Gilbert is the leader and founder of the one of the most prominent one of the most game-changing, one of the most transcendent factions and groups in professional wrestling, Hot Stuff International. Not only that, he is the king of Philadelphia because he beat Terry Funk's ass in a match um, for that right. And so, um, with him passing, I believe, uh, was it 94 or 95 that he passed? 95. With him passing, um, I guess it would have been two years prior at that at that point. Um, it says a lot about NWA New Jersey that they would do something like that. Good shit. Good shit, y'all. The results as follows. The Beat Bullies, comprising of the Inferno Kid and God of Jobbers, God of Jobbers. Surfer Ray Odyssey. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Oh, All yeah. right. <laughs> Oh, he done washed up uh, in New Jersey. Uh. Defeated NWA United States Tag Team Champions Downward Spiral, comprising of Adrian Hall and Twiggy Ramirez, to win the title, ending their second reign. That's a cool name. I hope somebody in WWE steals it. Mr. Puerto Rico defeated Steve Carino. The Black Scorpion, who was Rick Ratchet, defeated Donnie B. Deviously. <laughs> I like that name. Oh, like Johnny B. Bad? Or Paulie Dangerously. Tommy Gilbert defeated Ian Rotten. I wonder if any... Are, is Tommy related to Eddie by any chance? To Daddy. Oh, shit. Oh, well, good job, Mr. Gilbert. That's, dang, he was still wrestling. In, not, oh, just because Eddie was dead, it don't mean he was, I guess. King Kong Bundy defeated Don Montoya. Lance Diamond defeated Cheetah Master <laughs> and NWA North American Heavyweight Champion Reckless Youth in a triangle match to win the title. Oh, shit. Marty Jannetty defeated Harley Lewis. Oh, man. Times must have been rough for Marty. NWA World Heavyweight Champion Dan Severin fought Dory Funk Jr. Oh, to a double why? countout to retain why? the title. Why? You have a legit badass in Dan Severn fighting a motherfucker of how is he still alive? Like what what is keeping his motherfucking exoskeleton or I guess it's not an exoskeleton. But what's keeping his motherfucking skeleton functioning where he can still go in and out of a motherfucking match? See the your fuck. Well, that would explain it then, because see, like there's there's only one person I know that's older than Terry Funk, and it's fucking Dory Funk. And Dory Funk is easily he he, he was there at the motherfucking dog. Uh, uh, I was about to say he was there at the crucifixion, but I don't want to go too far with. Uh, and he was old then, was but old you know, then. said but. <sighs> Anyway, I, I, but I guess the apparently someone gave a fuck about Dory Funk's name to come see it, I would imagine. No, I wouldn't imagine. Icon won a battle royal. Doug Gilbert defeated Buddy Landale. Flash Funk defeated Ace Darling. And in the main event, Gold Dust defeated Derek Domino. That must have been Slumma Mania because it's a lot of people that I know around that time was not hot and struggling. 
And you sharing a card with Dory Funk Jr., the old one, the, old the elder. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? The nigga that's 6,492 years old and shit. April 13th, 1997, ECW held its first ever pay per view event, Barely Legal, in front of 1,000. 170 fans at the ECW arena in Philly. The show got a 0.2 buy rate. The event almost didn't take place, at least on pay-per-view, due to the infamous uh, fucking shit that happened when a, a uh, the, the mass transit incident. incident. Stay tuned. Okay, okay. The results as follows. Dark matches. Louis Piccoli pinned Balls Mahoney. Chris Chetty and JT Smith Defeated the FBI. My nigga JT still eating out cheer, courtesy of Hot Stuff International. Live pay-per-view matches. The Eliminators, John Cronus and Perry Saturn, defeated ECW World Tag Team Champions, the Dudley Boys, Bubba Ray and Devon, when Saturn pinned Bubba after total elimination to win the title. Rob Van Dam, subbing for the injured Cut Candido, <laughs> pinned Lance Storm after a Van Daminator and standing moons- moonsault splash. After the match, RVD cut a promo stating that he was far better caliber wrestler than being a replacement for someone who was injured and hinted and hinted that he might jump to the WWF. Oh, shit. He ain't taking that shit. Grand Hamada, the great Sasuke, and Masato Yaku CG. Jab, jab, and jab. Subbing for the injured Grand Nanawa. Defeated BWO Japan, comprising of Taka Mishinoku, Terry Boy, and Dick Togo, when Sasuke pinned Mishinoku after a Tiger Suplex. Time out. So, not only do we have the Blue World Order, which is a parody of the the NWO New World Order, we have a BWO Japan, we have a J- Japanese offshoot of a parody faction is what you're telling me stay tuned and these and ecw hardcore fans like to make fun of wwe fans where do you find the nerve where do you find the gall because i saw um one particular um um post the admin was having a conversation with um basically telling a hardcore ecw fan that he wasn't that different from a wwe fan and he just didn't see it bwo japan motherfuckers (laughs) yes yeah welcome to the club yes of what whether it's doink the clown or motherfucking the japanese blue meanie we're, we're all the same unbelievable you fucking goofs don't get it <laughs> and this is why I will always be your scourge of the IWC. And I'm an outsider and I see this shit. <laughs> They're inside the bubble. Oh my gosh. You think you're above everybody else? You're not. You're a goof just like the rest <laughs> of the goofs. I'm a goof. My compatriots yeah. are goof. I, I, we're I all goofs. It. We own it. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, we own that we're goofs. You fucking goofballs think you're, like, better because I was there when I saw the Sandman come back to ECW. Well, motherfucker, the bitch left ECW because he wasn't getting paid. Correct me if I'm wrong. I could have swore I saw some of ECW's real wrestling. <laughs> I, I always say smart marks are the biggest marks. <laughs> yes. <laughs> They're the easiest motherfuckers to fool. The easiest. Yeah, because all you got to do is put something in a dirt sheet. Done. <laughs> if, Mel, if Mel says it, it's over. It's gospel. These motherfuckers put out a motherfucker. It was a social media site on, on Facebook where, where the motherfucker, they put out Meltz's, Meltzer's uh, star ratings for WrestleMania and NXT TakeOver. Like, I give a damn. I give a damn. Like, who cares? Oh, boy. <laughs> and the fact that you fucking goofballs follow that is, is a testament that why you fucking idiots will always, always be fucking idiots to the fucking recurring cycle that is the circle jerk that is the IWC. <laughs> oh, man, speaking of recurrent... 
Um, you know how it's, people make deals with the devil. Well, Dory Funk's deal with the devil obviously has a recurring payment plan. ECW World Television Champion Shane Douglas pinned Pitbull number two after a belly to Bailey suplex to retain the title. Good job. Taz defeated Sabu by making him pass out with the Taz mission. The clear main event of the of the of the show. Okay, okay. Stay tuned. Oh no, we're just, getting there. I just peeked at the screen. God damn. Terry oh, Funk. Oh, Terry boy. Funk defeated the Sandman and Stevie Richards with the BWO in a three way dance to earn an immediate ECW World Heavyweight Title match. Funk and Sandman simultaneously pinned Richards after a double power bomb. Funk pinned Sandman with a moonsault after Richards gave Sandman a Stevie kick with a trash can. How the fuck does Terry Funk go over in a match with the Sandman? And I imagine even Stevie Richards had to be cooler than Terry Funk at that particular point in time. Not only did Terry Funk go over once. Terry Funk pinned ECW World Heavyweight Champion Raven with a fruit roll-up after Tommy Dreamer DDT'd Raven to win the title. This ended Raven's second reign and began Funk's second reign. Terry Funk was obviously a cocaine dealer who had the same deal with the devil that Dory has because there is no way in hell that he is going over in these matches unless he's getting people high. He's getting the bookers high. He's getting the wrestlers high. He's getting the ring announcers high. He's getting the referees high. He got to be getting some of the fans in the motherfucking crowd high because some of them still be cheering for his uh, motherfucking Jurassic ass and shit. So uh, that's the only thing that I can come to that makes sense. He's a cocaine dealer. He loves giving out samples or trading that shit for motherfucking favors. Oh, and guess what, gentlemen? Be on the lookout because I imagine since he likes to have dudes take off their coats and their shirts and shit that he's willing to trade some cocaine for some service, if you know what I mean. Allegedly. Allegedly. April 14th, 1971. Terry Funk. Oh my God. I thought we were done with him. Defeats the grappler, Johnny Walker, for the Florida NWA Southern Heavyweight title in Miami, Florida. And what year was this? 1812, you said? And finally, today, the Ides of April, April 15th, 1995, ECW held its second annual Hostile City Showdown in a Flash forward event at the ECW Arena in Philly. The results as follows. Mikey Whipwreck pinned C.V. Richards with Raven with a Hurricane Rana. <laughs> oh, shit. Go ahead, Mikey. Subo Ginjin pinned the fashion plate of ECW, Tony the Hitman Stetson. After oh, a, shit. After a standing knee drop and leg drop. <laughs> Welcome back, Hitman. Ian Rotten pinned Axel Rotten in a bad breed death match after hitting Axel with the head in a chair. Oh, after hitting Axel in the head with a chair and wrapping him with barbed wire. Why are y'all beefing though? Stay tuned. The Putts <laughs> fought Raven alongside Beulah McGillicuddy and Stevie Richards to a no contest after Dreamer took everyone else around the ringside area out with three DDTs and a pile driver. Dreamer gave Raven a DDT on the floor and in the ring gave one to Richards to referee John Finnegoof before pile driving Beulah McGillicuddy and finally getting over with the ECW audience. Quick question, Beulah, character or woman? Stay tuned. (sighs) ECW World Television Champion Eddie Guerrero fought the shooter to a 30 minute time limit draw to retain the title. D. Malenko. The Sandman pinned ECW World Heavyweight Champion Shane Douglas with Woman oh, shit. to win the title, ending Douglas's second reign and beginning Sandman's second reign. Get out of here. Douglas had Sandman locked in a crossface chicken wing when Woman turned on Douglas to hit him in the leg with Sandman's Singapore cane, causing Douglas to fall back with Sandman on top and Sandman getting the pin in a recreation. Or no. 
It's before. No, 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 no. Wait, 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 wait. WrestleMania 8 was the first time Bret Hart did the, the fluke finish with uh, Piper. Piper, yeah. Okay, all right. After the match, Douglas put on a Monday Night Raw t-shirt and left through the crowd. <laughs> oh, damn. <laughs> Way to shit on the finish there, uh, Shay. And lastly, same day, 2003, Big Al defeats Chet Jablonski in Cincinnati, Ohio to win the Heartland Wrestling Association heavyweight title. I know Big Al definitely got to still be kicking. This was only 2003. Big Al, I'm coming for you. And the, what bell was that? The Heartland Wrestling Association heavyweight title. Yeah, I don't give a fuck. I just want the belt. And on that note, we continue just for you the extreme retro review in a few peace peace